Hello and good evening to everyone present here. Today I Rohan Matthew and I Vedant Singh are going to talk about an issue that is far fetched, far spread and far away from stopping. We're going to talk about an issue that is present in everyone's lives whether we realize it or not. We are going to talk about religious conflicts. Religion is a way for the followers of God to find peace and understanding in life. But now we humans have made religion a cause for so many deaths and conflicts destroying the true purpose of religion. Human beings have evolved a lot from our beginnings both biologically and socially. Most major social barriers like gender and color have almost been entirely eradicated, but the last barrier, religious conflicts, still stand unshaken. Why are we letting this last barrier still stay up? All it does is create chaos and hatred among humans and make us far worse as a species. Instead of fighting over religion, we should be fighting towards a better world for our future generation. We are the ones who have created this mess and it is our job to put an end to it before it consumes everything and everyone. Religious wars have ravished our world for centuries, creating utter chaos and destruction. They have been mainly divided into two types, being interreligious wars, which are wars fought between religions and sub-religious wars, which are wars fought between the denominations in a religion. The first step into trying to solve a problem is understanding its origins and roots. This is why we will be talking in detail about a few major religious conflicts so that everyone present here gets a larger idea of what they are and how they have affected us. The first topic we are going to be talking about are inter-religious wars. The first major inter-religious wars fought were the Crusades. This was the war fought between Christians and Muslim invaders where Christians were trying to recapture their holy land. This was declared as a holy war by Pope Augustine. Now, this was a major change in our world as it was the first war which was declared as a religious war. This term has been used many a times in history after this, like in the Iberian religious wars. This was the war fought between Spanish Christians and the North African Muslims who invaded Spain. This was the longest war in the history of our world, lasting for 781 years, killing millions of people. There have been many other religious wars in the history of our world, like the Sudanese Civil War, the ongoing Syrian Civil War, and I'm sure everyone will know about the Jew Holocaust, where more than 6.5 million people were slaughtered and millions other displaced from their homes all due to the wishes of a few who were against them. This was a live display to the world about how inhuman we can be towards religion. Now coming to our very own country, religious wars have been present in India since the medieval times, like during the period of the, De uh, of the Delhi Sultan, where Hindus were mistreated and killed, to the times of Tipu Sultan, where thousands of Christians and Hindus were killed and chased out of Mysore state, and their churches and temples destroyed. Talking about more recent times, the uh, partition and Gujarat and Sikh riots where thousands of Hindus, Muslims and Sikhs were killed. All these wars took a devastating toll on our country. I'm sure most of you present here would think that inter-religious wars have been far worse than sub-religious wars. But the truth of the matter is sub-religious wars have been equally bad. The first major sub-religious wars was fought between the Roman Catholics and the Protestants. These wars were the Thirty Year Wars and the French Religious Wars, which had a combined death toll of more than 8 million people. This was one of the most deadly series of war in the history of our world. Another major series of sub-religious wars were fought between Sunnis and Shias of Islam. They fought over who would be the next successor to Prophet Muhammad, which led to the Battle of Sifin and Jamal, which killed thousands of people. This shows how such petty issues as who will be the next successor leads to major wars, wars that decimate human population. Now coming back to our country, most major sub-religious wars in India have all been caused due to inter-caste violence. Inter-caste violence is a major cause of conflict between us and undermines basic human rights and values. Religious wars were not only a thing of the past, they can be seen in various places around the world even today. Two major ongoing conflicts are the Rohingya crisis and ISIS terrorism. Beginning with the Rohingya crisis, which has been going on for quite some time now, 
but has intensified drastically over the last two years, where Rohingya Muslims have been forcefully thrown out of Myanmar by Buddhists. This led to death of more than 13,000 people, and thousands were left homeless. Addressing the issue about the Islamic State, which is the world's largest terror outfit, their goal is simple and clear, and it is to create an Islamic nation across the world. Their campaigns have caused more than 500,000 deaths. People have the right to choose and follow the religion that they want, right? That means force cannot be a measure used to convert them. Human beings have a special ability to, uh, to create bad out of everything good. For example, the development in science leads to more destructive weapons or the abuse of power by priests and politicians that we can see all throughout our lives. This needs to come to a stop. Something which was made for the betterment of us has now made us worse as a whole. Killing people for the sake of religion is the most inhuman thing we can do. We fight over reasons like he damaged my church, he disrespected my traditions, or even he ate my God. But conflicts over these don't justify facts. They just put down the name of our religion. We need to learn how to be more tolerant and we must stop instigating religious fights. These conflicts must come to an end. I'm no atheist, but at the rate of which things are going on, I'm not surprised why most people in our generation don't believe in God anymore. We claim to be modernized, but how can we even think about this while we still fight over such petty issues like religion? Every individual have their own differences. Whether they are right or wrong, they are our own beliefs. But why do we fight over whose beliefs are better? We must learn to live and let live. We must be united and be in peace. Forget all other religious laws. This should be our fundamental law to help us coexist. Just imagine if all these conflicts and war would come to an end, then true good human nature would be seen. Religion has so many advantages and it should be used for good. We must treat everyone with love and respect regardless of their religion. This can be only be achieved through education. Education is the key to solving all religious problems. The only way to solve a problem is by understanding it. This is why it is important for everyone to know what religious wars are, how they are caused and how they can be resolved. People need to be educated on how inhuman and destructive religious wars are so they can be wholeheartedly against it. They also need to be taught right religious values. Education teaches people how to follow one's religion well and at the same time be more tolerant towards other people's religions. Teaching the youth is much easier than teaching the grown-ups who already have their own set of beliefs and ideas. So people must pay attention that youth must follow the right beliefs and ideas as they play a major role in the betterment of our world. We should also learn how to respect each other for what religion they belong to. People should be known for their values like kindness, hard work and not what religion they come from. There are so many good examples of people from all religion stay in unity and peace. Like in the armed forces, the sports team, and our very own school. Everyone must look up to these examples so that we too can break this barrier of religious conflicts. Speaking of barriers, the, on the only time when we can see religion in its truest form is when all people of all religions are put together in dire conditions. For example, in the recent Kerala floods, everyone were treated with love and respect, regardless of their religion. Churches, temples, mosques, open their doors to refugees, and everyone prayed here to God practically as one. This is how religion should be, and this is religion at its finest star. So we leave you with this idea. Think about it. Thank, Thank you. you.